chances to be able to set up a sword stance. Yeah, definitely, because there are some, uh, there are a lot of Pokemon on Lucas' side of the field that are really susceptible to those Precipice Blades. But we are going to get in to this game number one. We're going to see Ivan lead off with the Goth itself and the Chiyu. The Beads of Rune are active and also that Shadow Tag now active. Nothing can switch out on Lucas' side of the field as long as that Goth itself stays on the field. We're going to see the Maraidon and the Whimsicott from Lucas. So a very offensive lead from Lucas' side of the field as that Electric Terrain is set up from that Hadron engine ability. Yeah, normally the Raidon wants to just Volt switch out, and that's easily easily doable in the face of Shadow Tag. That will ignore that ability completely, but it's got to contend with the Fake Out here. You can't Fake Out the Whimsicott because it's carrying the Covert Cloak, so this makes a, the Raidon completely open to that Fake Out, would stop any of the Volt switches and allow that Chiyu to get off a massive attack, whether that's a Heat Wave to KO the Whimsicott or it's a Dark Pulse to do absolutely massive damage to the opposing Raidon. But we're going to be starting off with a Terrestrialization immediately, and it's going to be that Ghost Terror, oh no, sorry, the Ground Terror on the Chiyu. You. Ground Terror on the Chiyu, and it will be able to have a full immunity from any electric type attacks coming out from this Maraidon. We're going to see the helping hand come out from the Goth itself, and it's going to boost the attacks from this Chiyu. A light screen coming out from the Whimsicott, going to bolster those special defenses on Lucas' side of the field, and this Terror Blast. It will be a ground type attack, and it will be fired into likely the Maraidon. With that light screen, though, you've got to think it will be able to take it, but no, a big knockout here from Ivan taking a big lead in this first game. Yeah, that's a fantastic play coming out from Ivan because that was not a fake out into the Maridon. That could have been Tailwind and Volt Switch. <laughs> and then suddenly the Terra, Brown, Terra, Terra Grounds Terra Blast doesn't go into the Maridon anymore. But calling out that it was, gonna, it was gonna be the light screen instead of the Tailwind, fantastic play from Ivan. Uh, that helping hand was probably necessary through the light screen to be able to get the KO. Uh, so calling that out brilliantly with the helping hand and taking care of the restricted just on the first turn. Yeah, and uh, things get very difficult for Luca now because of that Gothic tell on the field it's it's going to be a hard pokemon to take down because now you've got that kind of trap active of course uh, the, the Urshifu coming into the field now for Luca, but not really going to pressure with too much heavy damage on that side of the field. The Chi is in an awkward position where it probably does want to switch out. Ivan wants to readjust the board position, so some, something like the Raging Bolt could come in here, which doesn't really mind. The Whims have got too much, especially because it has got that Assault Vest. going to be able to take those fairy type attacks a little bit better and then pressure that Urshifu a little bit more. Yeah, if that Golfatel was able to get off something like a Taunt into the opposing Whims, that would be able to shut it down very nicely. Uh, the Chi Yu surely is going to be in range of the Wicked Blow because it's not the most defensive and you don't run it very bulky if you're running Choice Scarf. Uh, but it's just a Detect coming up from the Urshifu here, not going on the offensive yet. Encoring that uh, Gothitelle into the Helping Hand here uh, instead of something that could have been like a Foul Play or a Taunt coming into the Whimscot. Terra Blast launched off into that Protect of the Urshifu, not doing anything there. And then you don't see it very often, Helping Hand right at the end of the turn. <laughs> yeah, not really when it is, has got that priority boost to it. We are going to see maybe Luca have to rely on this Urshifu now, going for that that terrestrialization, lock in with the Wicked Blow, and that would be enough to get the Chi, you not known for its defensive capabilities, and now the Gothitel is perpetually locked into that helping hand for the next few turns, at least until our Encore does end, but will the Chiyu be able to pick up the knockout with the Terror Blast, with that helping hand through the light screen on to this issue view that doesn't have a weakness to the ground type attack? Well, will it even be able to get off that attack? Because now you can just go for a Tailwind pretty safely with the Whimscop. That will allow the Urshifu to outspeed the opposing Chiyu. Gothitelle switching out into the ground on here because it was locked into helping hand. Might want to reset that fake out pressure that does have available. Uh, you can't switch out with your Lucas side the field so you don't have to worry about anything like that but you do have to worry about this terror dark coming out from the Urshfru. This might be the boost that tips that KO onto the Chiyu over the edge with the Wicked Blow. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're just seeing that Tailwind and Wicked Blow here. Whimscott does go for that Tailwind. Now the Urshfru should be faster than even the Choice Scarf Chiyu. Going to be able to do absolutely massive damage with this Wicked Blow. Now boosted by the Terra Dark into the Chiyu, and that is a one-hit KO. Yeah, and flipping the tables round, Luke able to pick up a massive knockout onto the Terrasalized Pokemon on Ivan's side of the field. That big threat in the Chiyu you now removed from the field. Beads of Ruin gone as well. So no more boosts to those special attacks, special defense all back to as they were. So that light screen is going to be even more beneficial. But in the face of something like the Groudon, you've got to worry more about those physical attacks. And even if you are the dark terrestrialization on that Urshifu, Jamie, Groudon generally known for those big defensive stats, being able to take physical attacks very well. Yeah, it is very physically bulky and it's going to be able to launch out a lot of offense. I wouldn't be surprised if two Precipice Blades is enough to be able to pick up the knockout 
on the opposing Urshfu. In comes the Gothitelle once again, so there's still the Shadow Tag going to be activated. No switching out here for Luca. You got a very free fake out into the Urshfu to stop any Wicker Bows this turn if you want, but then you do have to worry about the fact that you can be on court into that fake out afterwards. So maybe you lock into the Helping Hand once again. Do you go for the Foul Play, expecting maybe Precipice Blades in, and the Foul Play now that it's only uh, uh, single resisted rather than quad resisted? Would that be enough to pick up the knockout on the Urshfu? That would be pretty close. Yeah, potentially, but the Whimsicott God has to be careful here because it can get knocked out from just a single Fire Punch. You can go for the Fake Out into the Urshifu, like you said, and just Fire Punch into the Whimsicott. God. It hasn't mm -hmm. got that Focus Sash, so it will go down, um, and it's got no way to protect either. It has set up its Tailwind, it's set up its Light Screen, and there's nothing to really encore this turn, so it's a bit of a sitting target. Maybe a Moonblast is what you go for to get some last-ditch damage off. Yeah, the Fake Out here, going to be putting a stop to that Urshifu, but it did go for the Protect, so no Focus Sash broken here. A moon Blast, just the last ditch efforts to be able to do. Actually, some respectable yeah, chips yeah. to the opposing Groudon. I mean, yeah, there is that Fire Punch in the sun, easily enough to be able to pick up that one hit KO on that Whimsicott. Yeah, tying up the scores here as we have, well, not tying up the scores. I, I even still got a Pokemon we haven't seen yet as yeah. Luca going to reveal their last Pokemon. It is a Chi It is going to really thrive under this sun, especially with those fire type attacks. So, really, one Pokemon that you would say now could do a job maybe against this Groudon on the Gothitelle where you could launch off maybe a heat wave here and then followed up with a wicked blow probably enough to maybe knock out both things on, on either side of the field yeah you don't have terrestrialization available anymore for either side of the field if you could have the terra fire available on the ground on you'd have been able to resist those fire type attacks coming out from chi yu and probably able to survive but now that that, that was used on the the chi yu can't go for that defensively anymore and like we said ground on very physically bulky not the greatest special defense like it's it's fine but not going to be good enough in the face of the chi yu in the sun one of the strongest special attackers that we have that's probably why the ground is protecting itself yeah no one to dig any damage this turn the ground on protecting here as that overheat is fired into that slot now they've got the tell left kind of open to take a wicked blow but is it going to be surviving i don't think so Boosted by that Dark Terrestrialization, Wicked Blow cleanly knocking out the Gothitelle and removing that Shadow Tag. Although not something that's affecting Luca because he only has those two Pokemon left, but two strong Pokemon they are. Has Ivan got enough with the last Pokemon to deal with this big threat on Luca's side of the field? Yeah, we'll have to see what that last Pokemon is going to be. It looks like it's going to be that Fluttermane. Uh, whether it's going to get a speed boost or not could be very important here. Uh, we're going to get that Harsh Sunlight activating that Protosynthesis. It is going to be the speed boost. Now it's going to come down to the training of these Pokemon, but whether that Fluttermane is still going to be able to outspeed in the last turn of Tailwinds. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Wicked Blow, that's going to be enough into the Fluttermane when you've got your Dark Terror available. Over here is surely enough into the opposing Groudon, so... Yeah, does the Fluttermane, uh, uh, is it able to outspeed him? Maybe get a, a knockout onto the Chi Yu or the Urshifu? Well, they can't get a knockout onto the Urshifu. It's still got its Focus Sash attack, but no, Chi Yu is faster. Overheat into the Groudon. That is enough to pick up the Groudon here. Luca with the big overheat, boosted by that sun, enough to take down this behemoth restricted in Groudon, leaving this Fluttermane slower again, not fast enough, even with that Protosynthesis boost in the Tailwind. The Urshifu wicked blowing to victory. Yeah, very, very nicely done by Luca. After, in the face of him, ride on and Whimsicott, that would be a very reasonable lease, because you can just, well, there you go. Seems like you it perfectly. <laughs> uh, but there is the switch up from both of these trainers here. Uh, Ivan did uh, read Lee's mind and go with that Gothitelle and the Groudon, uh, but it's the Urshifu left, led with the Whimsicott rather than the Maridon for Luca. Yeah, I really like this adjustment from both trainers here. I think the Urshifu coming out, knowing that Ivan's going to lean heavily towards that Gothitelle, you've got that wicked blow. The Gothitelle can't protect it. Has got access to fake out so that has mm -hmm. to be something you do consider you run the risk if you go for that though getting locked into encore uh, the following turn so it can be messy but i think trying to get rid of that gothitelle has to be the top priority here you get rid of that shadow tag you free yourself up you're able to switch around again but at the same time you can't ignore that ground on it has got access to sword stance in the face of a whimsicott though a bit risky again, but that has got the fire punch that can pick up a knockout onto that Pokemon. And Groudon, not the sort of Pokemon that can get knocked out from a wicked blow. Yeah, and it seemed like a fake out into the Urshifu and a fire punch into the Whimsicott would have been pretty safe there, but no, no fake out from the Scottel. It's a switch out into the Raging Bolts. It's going to be an adjustment for Ivan as well. We'll see if this Urshifu is going to be keeping itself safe from what could have been the fake out. And yet, there it is. There's the detect. Makes a lot of sense to keep your focus, Sash, if you were going to be taking a fake out. Uh, the Tailwind coming out from the Whimsicott. Maybe already a last 
last-ditch effort to help the team as this crowd, and yes, it's just going for the fire punch, connecting into that Wimscott, getting that one-hit KO, and that's going to free up not not just the rest of your team from the Onkels, but like the Gothitelle can actually properly support the team now. Yeah, can come back in, trap the remaining three Pokemon that Lucas got, and kind of pin him into situations that aren't that favorable. I've been doing a really nice job to almost kind of fake a fake out, right? And yeah. then switch the Gothitelle straight out of harm's way. And I think the Raging Bone coming in is the sacrifice almost. If a Wicked Blow comes out, probably not on the calculations the, the, the Raging Bolt might be able to take that, that Wicked Blow, probably likely without the Trastalization. Yeah. But at the same time, if it does go down, you don't mind because you get your Gothitelle back onto the field. And the Groudon's dealt with that threat in the Whimsicott. And now things become a little bit tricky for Luke. He has got that Tailwind set up, and then that's great. So you can get something like this Chi that's coming onto the field now and really pressure and maybe from that game on we are going to see if that overheat will be enough to pick up the knockout onto the Groudon. Well, we could see it, but then we could also see that defensive terrestrialization that is now available in this game to the Groudon could turn into that fire type. If it's able to survive the, this turn and launch off Precipice Blades, that's a KO to you, for sure. Like, no <laughs> chance. Uh, and then the Urshifu would take a load of damage, probably be in range of Maybe even just you go for Thunderclap and a Precipice Blades, and then if your Groudon survives the turn, that's a double KO. Like the Thunderclap in the sun paired with Precipice Blades would KO the Urshifu as well. It seems like Luca doesn't really have an ability to KO both Pokemon here. He can probably KO one, definitely with a double up. That would KO either Pokemon, whichever way you double it up. But then you can't deal with both, and then suddenly you're going to take a load of damage, whether that's the Protosynthesis boosted Raging Bolt or even the Groudon. Well, we are diving into this next turn, starting off with the Terrastalization here from that Urshifu going again for that Dark Terror type, going to boost the power of those Dark type attacks through the roof, as we are going to see the Groudon just go for a Protect, not wanting to contend with getting knocked out this turn. It is a pivotal piece for Ivan, and the Thunderclap coming in, breaking that Sash. Oh, wow. wow, doing so much damage, taking it right down to that focus sash but surviving just enough to be able to get an attack off heat wave coming out from the chi yu going to be resisted by this raging bolt but still under the sun oh i'm taking that pretty comfortably yeah but is it going to take this wicked blow potentially or this could have gone into the ground on they can't protect in front of an ashfu that's oh, massive oh. damage into ground that's over half to such a physically bulky pokemon but yeah, like the Heat Wave would have surely been able to KO that Groudon. So it yeah. may look a bit strange to like protecting in front of an Urshifu, but if it didn't and Heat Wave connected with the Groudon, that was a KO. Yeah, because Ivan's done a really smart thing here where now you go for that initial Thunderclap and even if the Wicked Blood comes into your Groudon, you take some damage, right? You, you are now in the position where the Raging Bolt actually pressures the knockout onto that Urshifu and it doesn't give it the freedom to go for the Wicked Blood this next turn, which is so, so smart of Ivan. The Groudon's still kind of threatened here, but it does, like you've already mentioned, have that defensive terrestrialization that it could go for and give it the immunity to those fire type attacks that we know that Chi Yu's locked into. Yeah, it's, at this point it's going to be pretty close if the Groudon's able to survive. Like, it's, it's a sun boosted heat wave from a Chi Yu. It's still really strong. <laughs> Even into resistant hits, it would do absolutely massive damage. But it is going to be a terrestrialization coming out from Ivan here, and it is going to be that Groudon. So going for that fire typing, is that going to be enough to save it from this sun boosted heat wave from the Chi Yu? We'll have to see if that is going to be the case. If it is, it will be able to launch off a massive precipice plate. There's the heat Wave and oh, oh, it just survives! You what a clutch terrestrialization from that Groudon and the Wicked Blade. It didn't go into the Groudon, it went into that Raging Bolt. It is enough to be able to pick up the KO, but now the Groudon has the opportunity to launch off a Precipice Blade. Both Pokemon are in range. It's got shaky accuracy and it does connect. Oh. Hey, that's going to be a double connection and a double KO coming out from this Groudon. Absolutely <laughs> clutch survival. That is a huge turn here from Ivan. You did not expect it to take that hit from the Chi Yu like you were meant mentioning stacking up those attack boosts that the Chi Yu had. Under the sun, the heat wave, the beads of ruin, the ground on Trastalized and surviving, returning with a huge precipice blade. Surprised we didn't see a thunderclap there from the Raging Bolt. Maybe would have saved it and would have had that at the disposal here coming in against this Maraidon. Not over, of course. The Maraidon going to have that choice specs item, going to have the tailwind still intact. But the Gothitelle can come in now and freely go for a fake out. Precipice Blades, as long as it hits, it is going to pick up a huge knockout, tie up this game and take us potentially to a game three. Yeah, you say, you say potentially, <laughs> you've always got the shaky accuracy <laughs> of that Precipice Blade. There is the fake out, going to keep the ride on safe. Is this going to be a connection with the Precipice? It yes, is. Yes, this is. Going to come completely sweep through Lucas' team there. What a fantastic sh fantastic showing from that crowd <laughs> on clutching it out and launching us into this game three. Whether that wins is going to be led again or if it's left in the back, we'll have to see. It's going to be Golf Girls crowd on, so I've been Lying on what worked here, but yep, there is the Urshfu and the Wimscott once again for this game three. Yeah, and we did see the one thing that we could say from that that second game that Luca did was uh, it, 
were able to see the damage from a Trastalize Wicked Blow into the Groudon. You think two of those would be enough to get the Groudon, and then if you still got a healthy enough Urshifu, one's all you're going to need for that Gothitelle. So maybe utilizing that Trastalization early on from Luca, even in this situation where you are trapped, the only issue with that is you've got to contend with that fake out again, and you do that, you get faked out, and then you lose your Whimsicott for the trouble of just setting up a Tailwind. Yeah, you do have the option of the Terra Fire. That would allow the Windscot to survive, at least, and that might uh, come into play here. But then, you, of course, you lose the damage output that, from the yeah. Terra Dark and the Urshifu, and that's necessary to pick up some KOs as well. So it's quite a tricky one. And yeah, no, no, this time it's going to be Fake Out and no Protect here. So Sash broken on the Urshifu. Very nicely done from the Gothel here. There is that Tailwind once again coming out from the Windscot. But Urshifu is going to flinch here. It's not going to be able to Wicked Blow that so Gothel. Oh. And wow, oh. there's a Sword Stance from the Groudon in the face of the Windscot. The Windscot didn't get KO'd here. Yeah, that's very risky because yeah. now you're in the position where you have to protect that crowd on this next turn, potentially reposition the Gothitelle, get something in alongside it that can maybe get rid of that, that, that threat of the Encore from the Whimsicott, because now it's easy for Luca just to say, okay, well, I'm just going to click Encore into that Groudon. Even if you protect this turn, I'll click it the next turn and I'll lock you in. I prevent you from being able to do any damage. All the time, even though that Urshavus has a Satch broken, it's going to be able to just utilize that Wicked Blow, especially into that Gothitelle slot. And what comes in for that? Yeah. Is it going to be able to take a Wicked Blow very well? Probably not. Yeah, and, and maybe relying on something like Protect Ground Groudon and Taunt the Whimsicott. But then that could be an encore into the fake out so on the protect yeah. turn as well. So uh, j just like who, who's going to, if that's going to be a protector, where does the encore go? I think it's definitely an encore. Whether yeah. you encore or try and encore the fake out or you try and encore the sword stance, that's going to be the key thing here because it's not going to be the Gothitelle uh, going to be encored here. So the Fluttermane switching in. Is this ground going to be locked into sword stance? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see the Fluttermane coming in, the Protosynthesis activating and the encore yeah. into that ground on, locked into that sword stance now. Not going to be able to attack as long as the encore is in effect. Now this does all Open the door for a close combat from the Urshifu. Doing some big damage. It's a critical hit into yeah. the Groudon there. So doing some very significant damage. And now the thing is, the Groudon locked into that Sword Stance. It is a sitting target the next turn. It is going to be taken down from another close combat, another Wicked Blow. But what we found out earlier was that this Urshifu actually outspeeds the Fluttermane under Tailwind, even though we've seen that Protosynthesis ability activated. Uh, the thing is, though, we know the Fluttermane has that Choice Specs item. So it hasn't got the ability to protect in this situation. If we do see that terrestrialization into the dark terror type Urshifu, the Wicked Blow will be enough to take down that. I don't, I don't think you even need to commit to this. You've already got the Tailwind. You can get that extra chip that would be necessary with just the Moonblast from the Whimscot. That's a good the, point. The Groudon yeah. is, is just useless at the moment. It's just going to be stuck sword dancing. You'll need to deal with it eventually. You can't let it get to plus six <laughs> and then attack. But at the moment, you can ignore it. It's yeah. not doing anything. And the and bigger like, priority yeah. is that Fluttermane. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, it can't protect. It's a guaranteed Moonblast and Wicked Blow into that slot. Whether that was the Goth Tail switching in, that would be KO'd. If that was the Raging Bolt switching in, it would have been a super effective Moonblast, maybe even a KO with that. It switched in into the Groudon slot instead, so it's not going to be taking that combination of attacks if that is what Luca went for, assumedly into the Fluttermane. Uh, it's going to be a Terrestrialization here as well, but it's the Fluttermane. It's not going to be the Urshifu. So actually, if there wasn't a Terrestrialization on the Urshifu, this is now a not very effective Wicked Blow into the Fluttermane. Does that mean it's able to survive these combination of attacks if it's Moonblast and Wicked Blow? Well, we're going to find out the Moonblast first off into that Fluttermane, followed up by a Wicked Blow not boosted by yeah. that terrestrialization. Able to take it, a really nice terrestrialization there from Ivan, allowing this Fluttermane to stay around on the field and fire off a big Terra boosted Dazzling Gleam, enough to pick up that Urshifu. Yeah, not quite on the, the wind's cot there, but very good to use Terrestrialization there. Of course, Terra Fairy is so often used offensively on Fluttermane, but of course can be used defensively, dropping that Ghost Typing, meaning that Dark is now not very effective. I don't think that a Terra Dark Wicked Blow would have been able to KO the Fluttermane there either, so good conservation of the Terra coming out from Luca's side of the field. A Chiyu coming in is going to be able to outspeed the Fluttermane once again and be able to threaten with just Heatwave KOs at this point. Uh, the wind's cot is taken a load of damage. It's going to be in range of the Thunderclap here, so you do need to be careful about going for, for Moonblast, especially because you're next to Chiyu. That would definitely mean that it's in range of the Thunderclap. Uh, so probably just going safe here for the light screen. That would help a lot against the opposing Ranger Bolt, and then the Chiyu can clean up that Fluttermane quite easily. Yeah, especially with the Tailwind set up now, and it's got that Choice Scoff as well for the added speed that it doesn't necessarily need at the moment, but as long as the Heat Wave does connect, it is going to be enough to pick up the Fluttermane. Do some decent chip to the Raging Bolt, 
difficult and that light screen like you say it will if the thunderclap comes out into the whimsical allow the whimsical to stick around for another turn because the thunderclap will inevitably fail but we are going to see the trialization from luca and it is going to be into that chi yu going into that ground type terror type chi yu and uh, will threaten with a terror blast into that raging bolt but primarily i think first off you need to deal like jamie said with that flutter main yeah you absolutely do and a way you can deal with it is reduce its damage output with that light screen as well and very smartly here from luca not opting for the inaccuracy of the heat wave going for the 100 accurate terror blast which is easily enough to pick up the knockout on that opposing flutter main it has the added benefit now of being immune to the electric type attacks on the raging bolt you can always threaten that with a terror blast on the next turn as well so i think very smartly done here but it's draco meteor into the opposing chi oh! and it's a critical hit <laughs> to pick up the one hit ko on the chi yu through the light screen that, that was so crucial there because the light screen means yeah. it would have easily survived yeah, a huge turn here of events for Ivan, picking up a massive knockout with that Draco Meteor. Like you said, Jamie, the light screen already put in place by that Whimsicott on Lucas side of the field. So really unfortunate, the critical hit kind of taking the light screen out of the equation. Chi Yu not known generally for its uh, defensive capabilities. So going down so quickly to that attack. Very big play there from Ivan, not opting for something like a thunderclap there to get rid of the whimsical, identifying that the Chi Yu was something that you need to chase down as soon as possible and getting very fortunate with a huge critical hit. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be the Maraidon, of course, joining the field for Luca down to his last two Pokemon here. Uh, it's going to be Groudon joining the field for Ivan, though. Could have been an opportunity to bring in the Gothitelle and go for fake out into the Maraidon and then Draco Meteor follow up. Maybe KO, probably not with the minus two and the light screen still. Uh, so the Groudon's still going to be threatening good damage here. It's going to be out of range of the Moonblast from the Whimsicott, surely. So you're now threatening the Precipice Blades, which means that surely you have to go for the Draco Meteor into the Groudon. But then at the same time, baiting that with the Protect, maybe, that would free up the Raging Bolt to go for a Draco Meteor of its own. Yeah, and the, the, the Maraidon going into that Groudon Protect. So Groudon going to survive one more turn, but going to be susceptible to that Encore. The next turn, if the Whimsicott can stick around, Moonblast into that Raging Bolt, doing some very good, respectable damage, taking it just below 50% health with that return of the Cricketal Hit. And a Volt Switch here from the Raging Bolt, the light screen allowing it to survive, but it does allow that Gothitel to come onto the field now and have access to that Fake Out, which is going to be perfect timing to prevent potentially an Encore coming out from that Whimsicott. The next turn, locking out that Groudon into that protect yeah of course it wouldn't normally be able to stop the encore but it's at such low hp uh, because of the covert cloak stopping that for that flinch chance doesn't matter it's going to be able to be in the range of that as well but I, you, I assume so but do you have to go into the maraidon well, with the faker because uh, if you don't uh, you're just going to take a draco meteor yeah but then the, on the encore can just go into the ground on because it just went for protect so surely you have to go for the fake out into the whimsicott right so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, kind, of a, to, yeah, it's yeah, kind of an yeah. awkward position. Like, yeah, you need to stop the Draco, <laughs> but you can't because then you're Encored. But then you need to stop the Encore, but then you can't because then you're draco -ed. So, yeah, it's a really awkward position here for both of these trainers. I think you surely go for the Draco Meteor into the Groudon, but yes. just which one do you fake out? you got to accept something bad that's, that's going to that's gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's the choices we make, but we aren't going to see the Groudon stay on the field to even entertain the possibility of being Encored. This is going to switch out for that Raging Bolt now. So this is risky as well if a Draco Meteor comes oh. into that slot. Oh, and the fake! Wow, that's a clutch survival from the Whimsicott there. Keeping it around. There's the Draco Meteor. It went into the Gothitelle. So wow. it's, and that's a one hit KO as well. Didn't target down the ground on there. Wow, what a fantastic turn for Luca. <laughs> Absolutely clutch survival of the Whimsicott. This is really coming down to the wire. Yeah, I can't believe the Whimsicott surviving on that imaginary focus sash yeah. there. Able to utilize at least one more Moonblast this turn. The Maraidon has taken the minus two with the Draco Media, but you've got to think potentially if you are going into the Groudon, it's going to be enough to pick up the Groudon. And maybe a combination of that and a Moonblast into that Raging Bolt would be enough to pick up the knockout. But you've got to worry about that Thunderclap that could come out and just pick up that Whimsicott so easily. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still completely up in the air here. Like, I can't see a safe path for either of these, these trainers. Like, you, yes, you're, go you're obviously going to Draco Meteor. You have to. Your choice facts. And it is going to connect with the Groudon here, so you're not going to take the Precipice Blade. We saw that the Moonblast was able to pick up the two-hit knockout if you critical here. <coughs> that means, assumedly, this Moonblast will not be able to pick up the knockout on the opposing Raging Bolt here. So, yeah, the Moonblast obviously going to be fired out. We didn't see the Whimsicott move. It wasn't going for any of its priority attacks. There is the survival of the Raging Bolt. And it's Electroweb going to be able to pick up that last little bit on the Whimsicott. It's going to drop the speed. That won't matter. Raging Bolt isn't fast enough to outspeed the Maraidon at minus one. 
one, it's going to have to dodge a Draco Meteor. Yeah, you feel at that point the, the Thunderclap would have been the better option just to get rid of the Whimsicott to prevent that, that yeah, missile and Moonblast. Yeah. And here we go. There it is. Draco Meteor from the Maridon. Enough to pick up the knockout and mean that Luca Cerebelli is your winner of round eight, moving in to day two.